grilled, fried, hydro toasted? Think you know your hot dogs? Think again. As with any meat, the safe handling and preparation of hot dogs is paramount. Although some of the same guidelines apply as with other meats, there are also some specific food safety tips for hot dogs. Most importantly, even unopened packages are only safe to keep in the refrigerator for up to two weeks and at room temperature for just two hours. Moreover, even though hot dogs are technically pre-cooked, you should get them steaming hot to kill off any lingering food bacteria. The USDA also believes that freezing hot dogs for more than one to two months will cause their quality to drop. As you might expect, a rotten hot dog will taste awful and will likely lead to you getting sick. But how do you tell if a hot dog has gone bad? Well, mold and discolorations are fairly certain visual signs of spoilage. Other indicators include a sour smell and a slimy feel. Sadly, the fanciest cooking techniques known to man won't save a hot dog that has lived beyond its shelf life. A hot dog is a hot dog, right? Well, not really. In fact, there are lots of different kinds of wieners of varying levels of quality. One factor that complicates the search for high-quality hot dogs is that the term hot dog doesn't refer to what meat is used. It's actually a takeoff from when they were originally called dachshund sausages or little dog sausages. As such, hot dogs can legally contain all sorts of meat. According to the USDA, a frank containing any varying combination of pork, beef, chicken, or turkey can be considered a hot dog, although the product label must say which meats are in it. Frankfurters can legally include up to 20% mechanically separated pork and an unlimited amount of mechanically separated poultry, which, in case you were wondering, looks a little something like this. Like no, God! No, God, please, no, no! 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 Of course, sometimes all you really want is a cheap and cheerful pork hot dog, and nobody could possibly blame you for that. If you do have a hankering for something fancier, though, you could always try beef franks. Mechanically separated beef is banned for human consumption, so if you buy an all-beef hot dog, you're almost certainly getting higher quality meat. Another good general rule is to look for short ingredient lists on the packet. With the exception of the less than 2% section, which details spices and flavorings, you can probably assume that the fewer ingredients listed, the better. Have you ever cooked a sausage or hot dog and found a big split in it? It might look interesting, but it's actually kind of a bad sign. When the casing splits on a hot dog or sausage, it's releasing the fat, juices, and other things that help it taste good. Also, the fat dripping down leads to flare-ups on a grill or stove that cause charring. Knowing why a hot dog splits can help you prevent it from happening. Scientifically speaking, these splits are caused by pressure buildup from both moisture vapor and material expansion. Since the casing doesn't expand as fast as the innards, it creates stress that eventually leads to a fissure. So what can you do about this? Well, the primary culprit for splitting is a high cooking temperature. Keep your heat to medium and you'll greatly reduce the chances of your frank bursting open. Grilling is by far the preferred hot dog cooking method for Americans. A 2021 survey co-commissioned by the National Hot Dog and Sausage Council found 75% of respondents said grilling was their favorite way to cook hot dogs. No other option even broke double digits. If you are lucky enough to own a grill, no matter what kind it might be, you should always correctly prepare it for a hot dog cookout. But by the time this day is over, They'll have been taken by the grill and delicately and tenderly shown the ways of flavorful meat love. The number one secret is preheating the grill. Tossing hot dogs on a cold grill means they won't be cooking at the optimal temperature, which leads to improperly cooked or dried out franks. It can also cause food to stick to the grill grates and prevent it from searing, which is what creates those iconic grill marks. Finally, preheating will sterilize the grill and could prevent you from getting sick. You should also clean the grill first, removing any debris or residue. You might try coating the grates with cooking oil both before and after you cook too. Known as seasoning the grill, this process can reduce rust, contamination, and food sticking while making the grill easier to clean. Just like with any cooking appliances, preparation will yield a much better result. Another big hot dog cooking trap is turning the heat up too high. Essentially, hot dogs will burn very quickly if you're not careful. Quicker than you might expect, in fact. This may be due to how small they are compared to other meats. The standard size is 1.6 ounces, which means you'd need 10 hot dogs to make a pound. The easiest way to avoid a burn black hot dog is to turn the heat down. The ideal temperature range is 250 to 325 degrees Fahrenheit, which is around the medium heat setting on most grills. You could also use indirect heat to cook then. This involves creating multiple zones, with the meat placed in a different zone than where the heat is coming from. You should frequently turn the hot dogs or move them around as they cook to prevent burning, splitting, or drying out. Remember that since most hot dogs are pre-cooked, it doesn't take that long to grill them. Even using these cautious methods, a regular-sized hot dog should only need 5 to 7 minutes, with up to 15 minutes if you're grilling quarter pound dogs. Take care to avoid rushing, and you'll be much happier with how they turn out. Although hot dogs will never be considered a health food, they are much healthier now than they were in the past. 
Still, you should pay attention to a hot dog's fat content for a number of reasons. The USDA states that frankfurters can legally contain up to 30% fat, though this can vary greatly depending on the brand and meat. A standard all-beef hot dog has about 17 grams of total fat. Even with the daily recommendations on total fat going up from 65 to 78 grams, that means that one beef frank is still almost 22% of your daily value. Conversely, poultry hot dogs are much lower in fat. For example, ballpark turkey franks have 7 grams of fat each, less than half the 15 grams in ballpark original beef hot dogs. The return risk is that, as discussed previously, poultry wieners can legally contain lower-grade mechanically separated meat. But the flip side is that fattier foods simply taste better. The fat in a hot dog also affects the cooking process, as fat helps meat stay moist as it cooks. This means that leaner meats are more likely to dry out. If you do take the low-fat hot dog route, you'll have to be more delicate as you cook. A thermometer is considered a standard method of testing whether meat is fully cooked, so it's only logical to assume you would follow the same technique for the hot dog. But there are two reasons this isn't necessarily the case. For starters, hot dogs count as a fully cooked, not shelf-stable food that is ready to eat. In other words, no further preparation is technically required, which means there are no official internal temperature requirements to follow. Second, poking holes in your hot dogs and sausages let the juices escape. And when you're using a meat thermometer, you're sticking the probe directly into the food. This means that all your careful cooking and preparation could be for naught. Luckily, there are multiple ways to tell if hot dogs are done without poking them. For example, it's a safe bet that they're done when the frank has browned and is starting to curl. You can also look for skin that is blistered just a little bit. Cooking time is a great indicator, too. All but the largest hot dogs shouldn't need more than 10 minutes on the grill before they are hot and ready. When it gets too cold outside to fire up the grill, it might be tempting to fill a pot of water and toss a few hot dogs in, but boiling hot dogs is a no-no, as it can cause all the flavor to end up in the water instead of in the frankfurter. Hot dogs also end up mushy if left in boiling water for too long. It should be noted that boiling a hot dog isn't all food horror, however, as boiling can plump your hot dogs for a fuller look, while lowering the salt content to make the frank healthier. Experts, though, would argue that these two benefits don't outweigh eating a soggy, flavorless hot dog. Nevertheless, if boiling is your only choice, there is a right way to do it. Bring the water to a boil, add the franks, and cook for four to five minutes. Any longer will significantly affect the taste and texture. If you need to keep hot dogs warm, either set the holding water at 160 degrees Fahrenheit or move them to a steamer. Although grilling is the tried-and-true method for cooking hot dogs and boiling is considered a last resort, there are plenty of options in between. After all, part of a frankfurter's magic is that it can be cooked and served pretty much any way you want. No, I want all the hot dogs, please. No, no, yeah, no, you don't have I'm to do that. I'm buying all the I'm hot right dogs. Come no, on, no, you don't have to do that. I'm, right have to do I'm giving them to the good people. Oh. So instead of getting set in your ways, you should keep experimenting with how you prepare them. In addition to the methods already mentioned, hot dogs can be oven-roasted, pan-fried, and even microwaved. Leave them whole when frying or cut them into pieces. There's also a method known as hydro-toasting, in which you simmer the hot dogs in a pan of hot water that evaporates during cooking. And of course, you can use an air fryer, too. Other methods include steaming, poaching, and the heated rollers you might see at convenience stores and theaters. Different cooking methods produce different textures and tastes, so it's always worth pushing the boat out to see what you enjoy. You might even consider combining different approaches, such as poaching the hot dog in a flavored liquid before grilling it. Ultimately, you're only limited by the cooking appliances you own and the amount of time you have at your disposal. So you've put the effort into selecting great-tasting hot dogs, cooking them carefully, and making sure to avoid anything going wrong. But there's one more step dressing it up. Indeed, personalizing a hot dog with toppings is part of the fun. So why settle for an unadorned frankfurter? The next question is what to put on your dog. Ketchup and mustard are the most synonymous with hot dogs, of course, and they're also the most popular. A 2021 survey by the National Hot Dog and Sausage Council found that mustard was the top wiener condiment with 68% approval, followed by ketchup at 61%. But there are so many more options. The same survey ranked onions neck and neck with ketchup, followed by relish, chili, and cheese. Condiment favorites vary by region, too. Sauerkraut ranks highest in the Northeast, while mayonnaise and bacon are most popular out West. And that's just scratching the surface. The Food Republic Hot Dog Style Guide cites 40 hot dog creations from around the world, such as the Seattle, the Sonora, the Columbia, and the Montreal. On these franks, you might find jalapeno peppers, cream cheese, pineapples, cabbage, and even crushed potato chips. Try making one of these styles, or come up with your own concoction. You just might fall in love with hot dogs all over again.